we're gonna take this Bell Home Hub 4000 using these SFPs, right? And we're gonna go from this to this, through this thing, using SFPs, and I got another one here, to achieve this directly wired to it, and this on Wi-Fi, and this on Wi-Fi in the backyard. Let's do this before, heaven forbid, Bell goes and releases another service. Before we do this, let's get a coffee. Okay. I've had three gigabit for almost six months now and I've enjoyed it, but it may not be as fast as you've been led to believe. Services typically don't support up to gigabit in terms of download anyway, let alone three gigabit. And now that I've validated this for myself over the last six months, here are the main takeaways. Megabits are one eighth of a megabyte. So 3000 megabits divided by eight will give us around 375 megabytes a second. That's not what we're seeing here. So a quick note about the testing methodology. So what I have in my machine is I have two Samsung, two terabyte 970 plus NVMe drives. The write speed on those range from, I believe 2.5 gigabytes a second to 2.6 gigabytes a second. And then the read speeds, I believe are around 2.8 gigabytes a second. Now, because I have two of them, one of them acts as my boot drive. The other one is like a video scratch drive for when I'm doing projects and things of that nature. So we're gonna use the scratch drive, so not my boot NVMe to do the download testing. Check out this completely legitimate use case of downloading legitimate things using Usenet with 50 concurrent connections. Let's try a torrent. Here's a Linux distribution. By the time it gets up close to top speed, it's done. So, okay, let's try uploading a 20 gigabyte file to Dropbox. Let's try uploading a 150 gigabyte file to YouTube. Let's attempt a Steam download. And of course, a speed test from Ookla. Some of these things are seeing the speed increase, other things not really. Like here's a download from Apple servers and not to mention Xbox Live speeds. This is a Series X and we're not even getting close to one gigabit. Some of you watching this are wondering why I'm not opting to use PPPoE. It's been fine. Um, I throw quite a bit at my connection and there are reasons that people want to avoid using advanced DMZ, but in my day-to-day -day heavy media workflow and gaming tasks, I don't notice it at all. And on the topic of gaming, if you have an Xbox Series X and you need to get an open NAT type, I've had nothing but success using Advanced DMZ with my Home Hub 4000. So PPPoE seems to cooperate well with routers that can use all of its cores to process PPPoE frames. Very, very enterprise routers and almost none of the consumer routers I've seen seem to handle this well. On top of that, I've seen some cases where PPPoE can even lock up your router at times. Bottom line, Pick your battles. Okay, I digress. You really wanna try this without investing in a full server rack that's fully populated. Here's the method I use to get maximum speed from Bell Fib 3 gigabit. Start with the Home Hub 4000. You're gonna take a cable, so in this case, Cat8, and attach it from the 10 gigabit port from the back of the Home Hub 4000 and connect it to the AX89X via its 10 GBE RJ45 port. Grab an SFP adapter and another CAT8 cable and wait, should I do pricing? And you know what? We'll do pricing in Canadian because well, I am Canadian, clearly. Amazon is listing the AX89X at around 609 Canadian at the time of shooting, and the QNAP switch is around $315. I'm pretty sure any 10 GBE switch will suffice, but this was the least price prohibitive that accomplished my goals anyway. I also picked up these WeTech 10 gigabit RJ45 to SFP plus copper transceivers for around $79 Canadian. So taking the SFP adapter, plug it into the AX89X, Attach your RJ45 cable, then take the other end with another SFP adapter, that would be this right here, and plug it into one of the ports on the QNAP switch. Grab another SFP and a longer CAT8 cable and plug the SFP into the second port of the QNAP switch. 
and run the cable where you'd like to have the second router. This is what I consider a backhaul. You could do this wirelessly, but I didn't find the performance to be as good as I would prefer it to be. So it's been like six months and I have been trying to get the perfect setup down for using advanced DMZ because as I said earlier, you can't use PPPoE on consumer routers because they don't multi-thread PPPoE frames properly. So we're gonna do this together. I've reset everything so we can do this from scratch and I can show you. So here's my desktop. Okay, and we're gonna go to router.asus.com and we are going to log into the router. Okay, so you'll notice I have a private IP address. Okay, this isn't my public one and I'm not gonna show my public one. Um, so you'll expect to see that blurred. Anyway, we gotta change a couple of things here. Um, in the router at the moment, we don't have to change anything, but just keep in mind, we're gonna have to do some stuff in there later. So let's open another tab and we're gonna dial in 192.168.2.1, which is the IP address of the home hub. And you'll see that Wi-Fi is enabled here. So first thing I wanna do is disable that. So we're gonna log in and I know I could just do it there, but I, you know, I tend to just go into advanced and turn those off. Okay, now, perfect. We're gonna go into advanced tools and settings. So let's go back to the ASUS for a moment. So if you click on status right here on the right side under system status, you scroll way down. If you scroll down here, you will see the MAC address. That's the MAC address of the ASUS AX89X. I've done this a few times and I'm pretty sure it's gonna be like maybe a decimal or a digit off in the home hub. I'm not sure why it does that, but something to know. So back into the home hub. So now we're gonna open DMZ and we're gonna turn it on. And let me just kill that one. Now, if we go here, it should be 3C7C3F0A40ED, right? So it's this one, 3C7C3F0A40E9. The last digit's wrong and I'm not totally sure why. So now we're gonna turn on advanced DMZ and my IP is blocked here because I'm blurring it for you guys, but it's gonna say that the modem's um, wide area network or internet IP address is blah, blah, blah. So now we're gonna hit save. And it's gonna give you a warning that using a device in advanced DMZ mode poses a security risk. The device will be vulnerable to outside intrusion. The ASUS router is a firewall, move on. Okay, so settings were saved. And now if I close all this, why did I reboot the Wi-Fi? Why did I disable the Wi-Fi? I'm gonna have to reboot the home hub in a second. It's gonna turn back on. It's still showing a private IP address, but like, let's try to refresh it. It's still showing it. Okay, so to force a refresh, we're gonna go to WAN, and we're gonna see this enable WAN. Let's disable it, hit apply. So now it's gonna essentially refresh the IP address. So first, we've disabled WAN, so now we're gonna get an error message. You've probably stopped the WAN connection manually, which I have. So now we're gonna turn it back on. Now sometimes you have to reboot the home hub at this point. Hopefully that's not the case right now, but here, let's find out. Okay, so it's on, if I go to network map, okay, disconnected. And this is where the home hub will crash. Unplug the power from it and from the AX89X, Wait about 40 seconds, reconnect the power for the Home Hub 4000. And then 30 seconds after that, reconnect the power for the AX89X. Wait about two to three minutes and everything should be working at this point. Because you rebooted the Home Hub 4000, you're gonna have to go back in and disable its onboard Wi-Fi. Hopefully this is addressed in a firmware update. Let's try speed test. Okay, so if I open speed test here, I might get a download, but I won't get an upload speed. So you see we're getting like full 3.2 gigabit down. What's my upload? Hey, we're working. Looks like Bell fixed it. Good job. All right, awesome. But there's one thing you have to change on this router, which is really weird. If we go to LAN, we go over to switch control. So this 10G base T port acceleration type, I just wanna check something here. So my speed is good here, 
right? However, if I load a client that's connected via just one of the gigabit ports, what happens is it slows down heavily. Actually, here, I'll show you now. Okay, so if you see that strange dip right there, that's because this port acceleration has to be changed. So by default, it says auto. And there's two options here, PPP and NSS. I actually went through this with Asus and we like kind of came up, well, they explained to me that um, something to do with Bell, it doesn't like PPE. And by default, that's what the router is gonna try to use. So through a lot of testing back and forth, we figured out that to get full gigabit on your gigabit connected clients to the router, you gotta change these to NSS. So let's do that now, we're gonna change these. This is in the newest firmware that came out fairly recently, so make sure you do this. So now we're gonna reboot the router. See, this worries me because every time you reboot or change anything major in the ASUS, the home hub flips out and you have to reboot it. So there's a chance I'm gonna have to reboot the home hub. Really hope I don't have to reboot the home hub, but if that's a necessary evil, then it is what it is. Anyway, we'll just wait for this to finish. Okay, we're back online. Yeah, I guess uh, when you make changes on the ASUS, why it takes so long for it to figure itself out is beyond me. But anyway, where were we? We're gonna go into AI Mesh, and I went ahead and I set up the AI Mesh. I skipped all that, you guys can figure that out. And if you can't, there's a bunch of videos online on how to do it, but it's really, really easy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this one, and you'll see I have two clients connected. Those are hardwired. One is my Xbox Series X and the other is my Apple TV. And it looks like my Apple TV stayed online. The Xbox disappeared, whatever. So you're gonna to go to management. Now, down here you got switch control. So if you click on switch control, you're gonna to have to log into it. And here we are. So if you remember from earlier, these same settings, but these are the settings for the second router, right? Now, this is only gonna work if the main router in the chain, or sorry, the first router is an AX89X, right? So I'm gonna change these both to NSS, and we're gonna hit apply, and it's gonna reboot everything, and then I get to play the song and dance with Bell to figure out whether or not it's gonna uh, reconnect or if I'm gonna have to reboot it. So we're gonna let this reboot, we'll come back to it in a second. It's going to reboot, and then I'm gonna have to go back into that UI and disable the Wi-Fi, but then everything will work. You know, all of this could be mitigated if Bell would just stop being stubborn and give us an actual bridge mode. When you change things in the UI of the ASUS router, when you're in advanced DMZ, the home hub loses its mind. I am not sure why, but I do know that 100% upon rebooting it, it stays on and it's stable and it's really fast. It is all good from there. But again, Bell, give us a f***ing bridge mode for the love of God. But is this worth it? I think it depends on your needs. And to be honest, it's kind of overkill for a lot of people, but this is probably the most cost-effective way to get great Wi-Fi speed and beyond gigabit to a wired device. Not to mention, there's still another 10 GBE port free on the second AX89X if you wish to connect the machine there. My hope is that when Bell rolls out the eight gigabit service, that this setup would be enough to make use of the connection. And to be honest, the only reason I would ever consider the upgrade is to film another video or probably just to do a YouTube short to show whether or not it works unless somehow I get it for a good price, which some have reported in various forums already. But beyond that, I probably wouldn't keep it. Let's talk about Bell's eight gigabit rollout. Let's not have any illusions here. This is just an answer to Rogers and their eight gigabit announcement from the summer not to mention their other announcements from the summer, but notwithstanding the monstrosity of July 8th, where Rogers basically took down most of the internet in Canada. Okay, I gotta go off script for a second. You notice I'm in my car, I had some errands I had to run, so I set up the camera quick and thought I would, you know, do some of the script and some off the cuff comments in the car while I'm running errands. And I got to thinking about Rogers. It really blows my mind that somebody at Rogers must be doing 
hardcore drugs because as of right now, they are charging, and by the way, their footprint for their fiber to the home rollout is like a fraction. It's a small fraction compared to what Bell has already. They are charging $400 a month, a starting price of $400 a month for eight gigabit. You realize that as I record this video, that in select areas of Toronto, eight gigabit is like 150 to 160 and you could probably get a discount on top of that if you bundle it or you know if you have some kind of ongoing credit or something like that rogers you're charging more than double okay so that's problem one problem two is your network isn't the most reliable thing we all saw what happened july 8th even my youtube metrics i saw a spike in people going to my bell versus rogers video right after that because people were sick and tired of the non-reliability and your lack of advancement in the telecom space. I don't know. All I gotta say is, Rogers, you're a f***ing meme. Is this setup or a similar setup something you would wanna do? Comment below and hit the like button, which helps out the channel a ton, which will also help me eventually grow the channel where I can buy a proper networking rack instead of just using a box for a different type of rack. Check out this playlist of all the Bell 5 videos I've done up to this point. This is Tech Mixer. Thanks for watching.